Well, hey folks, welcome back to another video. Thanks for joining me out here in the beautiful outdoors of the Rocky Mountains. And today I wanna to discuss with you hatchets and really those kind of slightly larger splitting hatchets when you're on a budget. So we're gonna be doing a head-to-head -head battle today with these three tools, the Fiskars X11, the Gerber Freescape 17-inch hatchet made by Fiskars, and the S-Wing 16-inch Camper's Axe. So I went out and picked all three of these up some I've had in the collection for several years, some for several months, and really thumped on them, really put them through their paces, and really come up with some pretty interesting data that I wanna share with you guys today on what these size hatchets are capable of, what are maybe some of their drawbacks, and which one will be best suited for you, the outdoorsman, regardless if you're casual or you're a professional, and you're looking for something that isn't gonna break the bank, because all three of these will come in between about 50 and $60 on average. And so we had a bunch of fun testing these three tools out. I had my buddy Mike with me and he and I really went to town, not only in this very uh, focused testing, but throughout the years having used these tools um, really to see what these are capable of. All right, so we're gonna jump in with the X11 to kick us off. And this is from Fiskars or Fiskars, not quite sure how you pronounce that, uh, a Finnish company. So this hatchet is made in Finland. Uh, they own Gerber. So the Gerber Freescape that we're gonna take a look at uh, with the green handle in a little bit, that is made by the same company, same materials, kind of same design, but there is a significant difference with some aspects to the tool and particularly the sizing of the head. So we'll jump into that here in just a moment. But just to give you some reference points here real quick, um, what we're looking at is that high carbon steel head that is formed into the body of this fiberglass polymer handle. Now this handle is uh, 17 and a half inches long from the top all the way to the bottom there with most of the weight being near the head because the handle is hollow with a lanyard holding a nice flare, some kind of heavy traction, not heavy, I'd say medium um, on that orange part right there. So they put some, a little bit of you know ribbing in it to give you a little bit of grip there. Now you may be a little concerned like a hollow handle, what are you talking about? These are super tough, durable. I have had the X7, a smaller version for almost a decade and it is bomb proof. You can watch YouTube videos of people just hammering, driving over, doing stuff with these handles and they last and they're just so durable. So, um, and the positive to that is that it's gonna give us all of the weight near the head. So we got a head heavy tool, which is kind of what you want with a hatchet. You want that balance up near the head as much as possible to give you that power and punch. Now, one thing of note, that the other two tools are not gonna have is that the face, that's these like cheeks or the side, not the edge itself, of the X11 has a flare or a kick out, as you can see here, meaning that the head is even heavier uh, and it's wider. So it's got a, a wider, more splitting um, focused, usually is what you would expect out of that um, head shape right there. And then what we have is a three inch wide cutting edge and then uh, it's about five and a half inches, five and three quarters from edge to the back pommel. You can hammer in tent pegs and stakes and you know do those type of things. So how does this tool and particularly this head design really function overall? Let's just kind of see some of its capability. So this should be like the best splitter. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. It's gonna be some good slow mo right there. Alrighty, not bad at all, but let's see how the other two tools compare to this X11. All right, guys, let's go ahead and look at the next one on the list, the S-Wing. This is a USA made hatchet, so different from the other two. And uh, S-Wing's been around for decades. And particularly in this model here, what we have is a, a lot of differences compared to the other one. We have a full tang metal 
not only neck, but goes all the way down into the handle, rubber over mold. And then we have uh, a high carbon steel as well, tough, shock resistant, all those things that you would want in a tool like this. And then uh, what we have is from top to bottom, 17 and a half inches. Uh, so the only way that I see that they call it the 16 inches, they must be measuring it from the bottom of the, of the hammer from the top to the bottom, which is how I've been measuring the other two. It's 17 and a half inches overall. Got a lanyard hole, a little bit of a flare. And then we have a very different kind of style of head than the other two. The S-Wing design has a very thin head and a very thin face and then flares out near the back, really starting where it connects with the handle. So you do have a very thick pommel back here, which is a good thing, and it still can split, but it has a very thin, uh, more convex, larger, we have a four inch cutting edge that sweeps versus kind of the more abrupt three inch on the Gerber and the Fiskars. So that's just a different style, kind of a different design. And because it is a full tang, the balance point is a little bit different as well. Whereas on the S-Wing, it is right here near where the logo and the little sticker is about a quarter of the way down the neck on the Fiskars and the Gerber, it's literally down the center of the head. So that's just something to kind of be aware of as well. You're gonna have a different balance point. It's gonna be heavier throughout versus more head heavy on the other two. So there are positives and negatives for that, but it has a different kind of performance capability. And let's see what that actually looks like. Noise. Just waiting for it. Sweet. That was easy. See, I, I like those broad heads. I yeah. really do. Seems to be fighting like crazy. Oh, yeah, it is. All right, good to see the level of performance, not only in chopping, but splitting with this tool. But let's see what the final piece of the puzzle is with the Gerber. Before we really finalize and come to a conclusion with these three tools and what they're best suited for in different scenarios. All right, so this Gerber is gonna be very similar to the Fiskars that we saw earlier. Exact same handle construction, handle length, design. Guys, I gotta tell you that the flare out and just the, the way that this handles itself is just amazing. I, I really like the Fiskars and the Gerber designed handles. Hollow, um, meaning that the head balance is right down the center of the edge, basically, is what you're going to experience there. Uh, and the steel is going to have a Rockwell of about 55 for the Gerber and the Fiskars, double heat treat. But there's a couple things with the head that's different from the X11 that we saw earlier. And though they have the same cutting edge length and similar designed heads, the Gerber is not going to have that big, wider face with these little flares out here which means that not only is it lighter than the X11, uh, it's also gonna be the lightest of all three tools that we're looking at here today. Uh, and it's not as thin as the S-Wing, but it is not as thick as the X11. So it kind of comes right down the middle. One other thing I just wanna kind of touch on with these Gerbers and Fiskars, and they have a whole series, both larger and smaller designs with not only the Fiskars, the Gerber, but also the S-Wing. So just kind of keep that in consideration as well, but um, they tend to have a V grind, whereas the S-Wing has more of a convex rounded like hull of a ship design. These are more like an upside down pyramid or like a, a sharp pointed wedge. And what that tends to do is cause a little bit of rolling uh, and damage faster than on the S-Wing, even though the steels are pretty comparable. And so what I found is if you put a very slight convex with a, a sharpener 
on these tools, they hold their edge a lot longer. So that might be something you just want to consider if you're seeing in a Fiskars or a Gerber, the edge kind of um, showing damage faster than you may expect. Just put a little bit of a rounded convex on the edge and it'll hold its edge much longer. It's very tough, very durable. Um, but uh, that's just something that I have noticed. So with that being said, let's go ahead and see how this Gerber with kind of down the middle of all three head designs with thickness and weight, how does it perform? I actually like this. You like that one the best? Yeah, I think so. Nice, man, Gerber killing it. It is. Just feels in control. Precise. Yeah. Still got enough weight to split. I mean, that's like butter. It really is. I can't believe it's not butter. That is hilarious. I thought that would be like the least winner. Really? That is so funny. Yeah. It was just very precise, like the head control. Oh, yeah. No, I agree with I that. Mean, totally. Yeah. What do you think? Based off those two, which one would you rather do that with? This one seems a little bit lighter to swing. So good thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think this one. For the chopping aspect. Yeah, you don't feel as much arm fatigue as that one was feeling. Of all three, you can only have one to go on the next, you know, camping trip. Which one are you taking? I think I'm going to go with the Gerber. Nice. Yep. Any particular reason? Uh, the swings felt light. And uh, forearm, I mean, it held well. This one, I like the way it chopped, but it's just a big, I mean, unless I'm doing two-handed, I'm doing single-handed. Two-handed, this is gonna be. Just because of one. weight, you feel like it's because of weight. Yep, but if you're, sing if you're swinging single-handed. Yeah. I think this work. one's easier. Wow, sweet. Yep. Okay, for chopping, there we go. Yep. Good to know. So really interesting perspective from my buddy Mike uh, and using this tool a lot. Let's find out if I agree with him on how the Gerber right here in front of us is performing compared to the X11 and the S-Wing 16-inch camper. But before I give you guys my final thoughts and whether or not I agree with my buddy Mike, let's go ahead and jump into a couple other just basic details. Now, finally, before we jump into the conclusion and where these all fall and what's maybe best suited for your needs, the reason I like this kind of 17 to 18 inch size, uh, we could argue 16 with the S-Wing, you know, based on how they measure it, is that it's not this big, huge double-handed axe that's really heavy, kind of unwieldy. You can't do small, precise stuff. You really need to know what you're doing. But it's not this little, tiny, one-handed, you know, 12-inch hatchet either that, sure, you could split a little tiny log or something and do some delimbing, but it's not really very capable. These have a great kind of middle of the line. You can get a lot of splitting done for kindling for a fire. You can do lots of delimbing. They are not quite man-portable. You could absolutely do that, you know, take it on a, a trip with a on a backpack, um, but they're great for like RVing, car camping, um, you know, having around the property so that you're able to get a lot of work done, but they're not gonna have this huge footprint and they can still do the finer, smaller tasks as well. And so that's why this size really connect with me. With that, let's see if I agree with my buddy Mike and where these three tools fit in and what might be best suited for your needs. So folks, here's my conclusion. Basically, if you feel like splitting is really the name of the game for you, and that's what you're mostly gonna be expecting out of your hatchet, the X11 is the obvious choice with its wide face and that extra little flare out to help you with splitting tasks. But it will fall short in a lot of the chopping and delimbing that you may wanna be doing to collect the wood for your fire or to thin out and clear out brush. But if hard use durability is something that you are really looking for, then obviously the S-Wing kind of has it going on. It's hard to beat a full tang hatchet. I mean, what 
What else can you say in that way? And because of the thinner face, though it's not necessarily the best splitter out of the bunch, it is going to do really well with a lot of those uh, finer chops that you need to do, uh, as well as delimbing and chopping. So if you're doing a lot more chopping than you are splitting, this might be the direction you should go in. But if you want the all-arounder, which is really surprising to me, I really wasn't expecting a whole lot out of the Gerber, but because of the design, the ergonomics, the good balance up front that you want in a hatchet that is somewhat limiting with the S-Wing because it's so um, heavy throughout the design, and the thinner face than what you get on the X11, it has the capability to not only delim and chop really well, but still has enough punch and power to outperform sp on splitting tasks than the S-Wing. So this really has become kind of the jack of all trades in this lineup from everything that I have seen that it can do all things well. It's not excellent at any one thing, but it can do all of them well. Whereas the other two designs have kind of a niche that they're capable in, but they're limited in some of their other capabilities. So that's what I've seen with the Gerber and kind of takes the cake as the jack of all trades, but that may not be what you need. And I want to hear from you guys. What is your experience, not only with these three tools, pros and cons, but which one do you feel you need the most? Which one do you look for? Are you the guy that just needs something that splits all the time? Are you the guy that is looking for bomb-proof durability and more chopping? Or do you need that kind of middle of the road, can do everything well tool. I look forward to hearing the comments from you guys below. So thank you so much for coming over today. I hope it's been entertaining, but also informative and giving you the data that you need so you know the right tool to look for the next time you go out on one of your adventures. And I invite you guys to check out the other video popping up. Subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. We're throwing up content like this every single week. You can check us out on social media as well. We do a lot behind the scenes stuff over there. You can see up and coming projects that I'm working on. And then finally, guys, until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.